Hi guys, and today we're going to have a look at reupholstering um, some dining chairs. As you can see, I've got two here. One on the left is one uh, as it used to be. You can see the foam is kind of like sagging, it's quite thin. The cover is a little bit old and a bit dirty. Uh, the one on the other side, however, is nice and plump, uh, a bit firmer. Nice new covering, nice and clean. So we're gonna have a look at how to do that. Now, the reason why I decided to do this is because the original base on the chair on the right was made out of, I think that's five mil plywood. And as we can see, it's got a big crack in there. Five mil plywood might be all right for some people, but it's not all right for my 80 kilogram frame. So, uh, few steps to do this and a few little things you'll need. Um, firstly, you're going to need some uh, new foam, potentially, you don't have to. Uh, so I bought this two inch foam, I got it from Amazon for about 20 quid or 25 quid I think it was. Two inch foam, six inches according to my wife, don't tell her. Uh, you'll also need some new fabric, should you choose to use it. If you need a new base, you will need some plywood. I've gone for nine mil plywood. I got that from B&Q. That was about 15 quid. It's significantly thicker, uh, which is a bit unusual to sit on at the moment, because uh, I feel quite a lot higher. But it's also a lot sturdier and can, can take my weight. I don't have to worry about it. Other things you'll need, hammer, claw hammer preferably. Uh, works best for me. Um, to remove nails and things that are in there. Screwdriver will also help flat head, doesn't have to be any particular size. And for cutting the wood, a saw. You might also need a pair of pliers for doing the pulling out the nails. And craft knife, Stanley knife for cutting the foam. And some coarse or medium sandpaper to uh, to shave off the edges of the uh, plywood after you've cut it. So let's have a look at the first steps. The first step is obviously we're going to have to take the cover off the old seat. Okay, first step then is you're going to have to remove the seat pad. Now on most dining chairs, simple matter of just lifting it out. Sometimes you can push from the bottom. You can maybe just about see as well the plywood here again is cracked in a few places which is going to lead to the seat sagging. The first step we're going to remove these nails that are holding in the, uh, the fabric to the base of the seat. They're actually attached to these wooden bits around the side. Now for this I'm going to make sure I have something to hold the nails in. I'm going to use this rather beautiful bowl all the way from New Zealand thanks, uh, thanks to the relative who uh, got that for us. Um, and I think the best way to do this a lot of the time is to get the flat headed screwdriver underneath there and we'll have a little look at that. You can buy tools for it which do the job but uh, I'm not going to use those because I'm only ever going to do this once I hope uh, so it's not a worthwhile purchase. Okay so I'm going to try and get some of these up so first step I'm going to try and get the screwdriver underneath and just start levering it up a little bit and when I get it up a little bit I can then get the claw hammer in underneath it's not so not brilliantly easy but there we go the first first little nail is out and you're gonna carry on going all the way around doesn't really matter where you start and where you go to if you don't want the fabric I guess you could just tear it off and leave the nails in place um, and then work around that but that seems to me to be a little bit of a uh, cheat way to do it. Sometimes, as you can see here, the screwdriver doesn't really go under very well. So I'll just get the hammer, tap the end of the screwdriver, and drive it in underneath the nail. And then I can lever it up and out. And again, keep all your nails in a bowl. Don't lose them. A, because you can recycle them, reuse them. And also because if you've got some of these nails, they are quite viciously sharp, lying around on your floor. 
they could end up in your feet or if you leave them on a the table they could end up being mixed into some bread flour and dough and then end up in being baked in a loaf of bread which my wife says was entirely accidental ah. I'll let you be the judge so just work your way around take them all out and I will speed this bit up on the video because it's pretty boring to watch I imagine Namaste. This one is being a bit of a bastard. But perseverance. And the reward of as soon as I've finished this. Perfect time for a cup of tea or a nice glass of proper English ale. Or Welsh or Scottish. Not really had much in the way of Irish ale apart from stouts. Not a massive fan. There we go. Now, you might not be able to see, but the uh, grandmother-in-law, I guess, who, who upholstered the seats last time, she did a really good job, um, but obviously everything gets old, and part of the really good job is she stitched up the edges. Now, we can't get this off without removing that. Uh, so again, you can get your craft knife and just carefully, watching out for your fingers and the fabric if you're thinking of reusing it, and just cut through the stitching until it starts to open up after a while it should just start pulling out uh, then you can start to peel off the fabric but you probably have to do that on a couple of corners at least in order to get the fabric off Ooh, interesting this time different to the last one right the next step we're going to do is we're going to have to do the same thing again we're going to have to remove this board, because this board, as we can see, is cracked. It's not, not as bad as the last one, but it's, again, sagging. It's not very supportive. So we're going to remove that. So exactly the same principle. We're going to lever these up. But this time, if you can, what works really well is if you get the screwdriver, flat-headed screwdriver, underneath in between the boards, and then you can start levering it up. And sometimes... It can work a little bit better this time. It's, this nail seems to be really firmly in. So it might not work. It's breaking the board, but that's okay. Because now I can get the screwdriver underneath it and leave the nail out, which has gone pinging across the room there. So I'll have to go and find that in a minute. Okay, I'm going to go and do all this and then we will come back later. Uh, watch out for splinters on this bit. Easy to happen. And make sure you hoover up the floor afterwards. Okay, the next step. After we've removed the board, so don't throw the board away quite yet. We're going to draw a line around the edge. I'm just going to go and grab my pen. And then cut it out using a saw. Okay, so make my lines. The lines are going to follow. Doesn't matter that I'm using pen, because obviously. It's going to get all wrapped up. So I'm going to saw along these lines with my saw. I don't actually have a, a bench to do this or a proper outdoor space in the place I live. So I'm actually going to do this indoors. Um, I recommend you do it outdoors if you can. Um, and firstly, uh, I'm going to cut down on the diagonal here. Although actually I might cut straight through down here because I'm going to do a second one. As we can see, I've got the, already got the outlines kind of sketched on. Cut down here. And then cut down these lines. Now, if you're going to be in queue, 
and get these cut. Some of the B&Q got timber cutting facilities where you can get the board cut to the exact length. I got mine a little bit extra, um, but never mind. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to film that part because it's going to make a lot of mess. Uh, you might want a dust mask if you, you're doing it indoors. Um, I'm just going to use a normal saw like this because it's the one I've got. Uh, we could also use a hacksaw if it's got a blade that's going to be suitable um, or any other type of saw so long as it's going to go all the way through. Show you what it looks like in a minute. Okay, when you've cut it out to size, the next step is get your sandpaper, medium coarse, and I wouldn't really recommend doing this over carpet, so I'm going to go and do it elsewhere in a minute. But sand off the edges, get rid of any of the splinters, any of the rough edges, especially. This edge is very rough. Smooth it out so you're not going to tear any of the fabrics. Okay, now the next step, it's all cut out, it's all sanded. I don't know if you can see, but there's a very slight curvature to the wood. I think that's probably the way it was stored in B&Q for a long time. I'm going to put it so the concave side, so the bit that goes uh, like in and out, goes down on the bottom. So the bit that rises up will be on the top because I'm theorising that my weight pushing down will kind of like act like a spring and it'll balance out. So the next step is you're going to take the nails you can reuse the ones you did make sure you've lined it up so it's pretty much central it doesn't have to be exactly perfect although maybe if you're going to be doing it professionally it should be and then in the corners not too close hammer the nails in probably don't want to go too far on the first ones because if you make a mistake you'll have to take them out so I'm going to start off in opposite corners so that should hold it firmly in place. Careful of your fingers. There we go. Second nail in place. One thing I did do is that certainly kind of bent that nail as it went in. So good thing we've got some spares. Step in, do the other corners. When the corners are in, and you're happy, give it a smack. Or then make them flat. You can add some extras in just to make sure it sits properly and doesn't wobble. So now you've nailed that on, you've made sure it's nice and secure, all the nails are in quite firmly. The next step is to sort out your foam. So again, you can get your old foam cushion, and this one is disintegrating tiny little bits of foam which has gotten all over the place, it's pretty disgusting. That's probably a good symbol as why it needs replacing. So again, draw around it. Can use the edges of the foam, the new foam, as well to minimise the amount of cutting you have to do. Just make sure the lines go all the way around, that you don't kind of uh, go at an angle and go underneath the foam, because then your seat cushion won't be big enough. It gets towards a stage like this. Craft knife, probably about as long as you want it. Flip it on the side and then carefully cut along those lines. I have also heard people suggesting that you can use a bread knife. Uh, I'm not sure I'd recommend that necessarily. Maybe something that's got very fine serrations, but it's not easy to cut through the high density foam because it's wobbly. As you can see here, and it kind of snags quite a lot as well. So, it's a one side cut out there. I'm just going to flip it this side, 
put it down this way. Try and get it as straight as possible. Remember when doing this, I advise you make the cutting slightly bigger than it needs to be if you're worried because you can always cut more bits off, you can't add them back on again afterwards. Plus, your initial cutting might not be very neat. As you can see, mine isn't there. Quite a rough edge. Finish it off. Then when you cut it to rough shape, you can start to trim it up. Because if you've got lots of, I see the static there. Because they will show up underneath the cushion. Uh, if you've got two, two larger lumps, these are not so bad actually, but I'm gonna cut the worst ones off. Got the sounds and the smells of the Sunday roast cooking in the background, very nice, very distracting. So when you've trimmed it up, and I've not quite finished, and you can see how it compares to your old one, should be slightly bigger than the seat. This is still maybe a little bit too big my one, so I need to trim a few more bits off. You can see there, but it's getting to the right size. Anyway, when you've done that, you can apply a little bit of glue here, like wood glue, or people use spray adhesive, then stick the foam down on top of it, and that'll stop the foam moving from side to side. Doesn't need to be a lot, just needs to be a bit grippy. All right, guys, uh, I'm now back from dinner. Uh, I've been listening to Man United fail to beat Everton. Uh, one all was the score. No doubt Everton fans will be uh, blaming VAR for not getting a victory, but there we go. Um, as we can see, I've glued this on uh, so it shouldn't slip around. The next step is you can coat it in batting, which is what this stuff is kind of. Now batting normally is like a uh, like a fine bit of polystyrene kind of stuff, or not polystyrene, polyester stuff. The, the idea is it's going to stop your fabric from sliding on the surface and getting caught up and rumpled. It shouldn't be too much of a problem uh, on this. I'm going to use the stuff that was on the old chair, having given it a, a good beating outside. So just make sure it fits on, whichever way you want to put it. I'm going to have a little experiment on how it's going to go. I'm going to stick that bit on the front. I reckon that's going to be the best. Uh, then get your fabric and you want to I cut my fabric into thirds just to make this easier. Place it, the whole chair upside down on the fabric and have a little look and see about folding the edges over. So you want it to be able to stretch over the top, okay? And wrap around a little bit. You wanna have a little bit of give all over See, I've probably got too much on this side, and I've definitely got too much on this side. So, uh, if my glamorous assistant can tell me where the scissors are, uh, I will give this a very quick trim because that's too much, it's just going to get in the way, it's going to be really irritating. Uh, so, fold it up, only rough, probably about there. That still gives me stuff to play with in case I've made a mistake or an error. I am, as a financial advisor would say, risk adverse. So, there we go. Right, so the next step is, I'm gonna reuse as many of the nails as possible. I'm gonna start on the side, pick a corner, and I'm gonna try and get it nice and tight and flat around the side and then put in one of the nails. You can also use, I guess, staple gun and staples, but I don't have one of those available. Uh, 
so I can't do that. This does work a lot better with two people as well. Um, you can see I've got a pair of pliers to hold these fabric nails, or upholstery nails because they're very tiny. And then there, boy. That way I'm not smashing my fingers. So I've got quite chunky hands. Anyway, I will film this process uh, and we will see what it looks like when it's finished. So, at the corners, I like to just fold it up a little bit like that so you get nice neat pleats, which is what the grandmother-in-law uh, sewed up. And then when you've done that, get yourself one of your upholstery tacks and then carefully hammer it in place. Like so. And then keep repeating the process as we go around. Now with this bit here, I'm not entirely happy with the way the fabric's sitting. So I'm just going to carefully lever it out, which is why I didn't tap it in so hard. And straighten up the fabric, because it wasn't quite straight here. I had a big crease, which I wasn't happy with. Every now and then I find it useful to, when you've got the overall pattern, just trim off carefully some of the excess fabric, because otherwise it just gets in, the, gets in the way and makes things a little bit harder to work with. I just want to take a little break uh, as well to thank uh, Mark Horribin and Deborah McLaughlin, I think that's how you pronounce your surname, for subscribing. And uh, this video is also dedicated to Daniel Martin for the inspiration for this video and also for the, the nice comment on the, the last one. Um, you know, support is appreciated, thank you very much. And here we have the end products. Uh, the one on the left. This one here is the one we did first, uh, which is actually better than the one we've done second. I'll come on to the reasons why I think that is. The one in the middle, you can see the seat pad, very, very sunken compared to the two. And the one we've just done here. Now, what you can maybe see is the one on the right hand side, the new one, is if I zoom in a little bit, it's kind of at the front on the lip. It's kind of sunk in a little bit, and that is because the seat pad, I think, was bigger than this one here, stretching out for more for the forwards. So it's not resting on this base bit here, but it's sticking forwards. Uh, and that, I think, has led to this kind of effect. When I'm sitting on it, that bit gets squished down a lot more than the rest of it, and that's causing the fabric to bunch up, which is a bit, bit of a disappointment. Also, another point to note is that I have actually managed to spill a slight bit of chili con carne on the edge of the seat pad there. Never mind, I'm hoping that will wipe off with a damp cloth. But anyway, as you can see, uh, they're both looking nicer than the original seat in the middle, although the original seat doesn't look too bad, it's just a bit shabby and a bit old. They're definitely more comfortable um, and they're definitely better for taking the weight of someone who's 80 kilograms. Uh, so, my advice uh, with this is obviously. If you want to give this a go yourself, not, don't expect professional results. You can see these are, are looking fairly decent, but they're not professional. They're arguably not even as well finished as the original chair was when it was probably done. But it was a good fun thing to do. It saved me some cash. If you are going to get these professionally done, uh, uh, probably plenty of people local to you who will be able to do this uh, and contact them. I've no idea how much that would cost. Um, but yeah, give it a go. Don't be afraid. 
you can always take off this stuff that you've done and start again and do it again. Um, so when you're buying the fabric and materials, just in case you do make a mistake, I'd recommend, unless you've done it before, you get an excess. Anyway, please let me know what you think in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe, it really helps set me out. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you soon.